ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಮೊನ್ನೆವರೆಗೆ ಸ್ವೀಡನ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸಲಾಗ್ತಾ ಇತ್ತು ಆದ್ರೆ ಯಾವಾಗ ಇರೋದಂತ ಡೇಟಾ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಸರ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಸರ್ 
जो फंक्शन आयो टॉपिकेस्टे
ఇది ప్యాడ్ ప్యాడ్ అంటే బాగుంటుంది కదా
Good morning to all. Good morning. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Kaisi hai aap? Fine, sir. Bolie, bahut badiya. Good morning to all. Good morning, everybody. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Good morning, sir. 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 Good morning to everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Shiv Aftar ji bhi aa gaye. Sir aa gaye. Namaskar. 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 Badi photo laga rakhi Shiv Aftar ji ne piche bhai. Sir hum gaye the ye Pankaj ji le gaye the Europe le gaye the wahan ki इन्होंने ये अभी कुछ दिन पहले बात हो रही थी कि बैकग्राउंड ऐसा दिया जाए तो थोड़ा सा डिफरेंट हो आपके आपके कैमरे को रिफ्लेक्शन आ रहा है कोई ये वो जीवा तो साहब अपना वो वीडियो ठीक करिए थोड़ा वीडियो में एक्चुअली वो डबल रिप वो आ रही है एक इमेज और वो रूम की भी इमेज आ रही है हां इसलिए समझ में नहीं आ रहा सिरिस तो जी है या इमेज है मैं वो और दूसरे दिक्कत दे भी आ रही है कि उसमें बाकी का नहीं भी चल रहा है कोई श्रीवास्तव जी दो दो चीज मिलाएंगे तो ऐसे ही होगा जो है नहीं नहीं देखिए ऐसा है कुछ भी पंकज जी आदाब गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग मेरे साथ यूरोप गए थे यूरोप गए थे गुड मॉर्निंग सर आई वेलकम द टूडे चेयरपर्सन Uh, madam premalata bansal senior advocate from delhi and the past national president of aftp i welcome mr vinay kumar jolly chairman central zone i welcome my president and the past national 
President Shri Ganesh Puroi Sahib, Senior Advocate from Jabalpur. The speaker of today is Shri Anil Mathur, Chartered Accountant from Jaipur, a very learned speaker, expert on the Companies Act and the IPC. And uh, all the leading dignitaries, I, I am seeing the pictures, uh, Mr. A.K. Srivastava, uh, Mr. Natbar Panda, Triyob Kumar Das, Rakesh, Arpit Mathur, Virappa, Indarmal Jainji, Mr. Jain, Nitin Gautam, uh, Roop Jain, P. Devananda, and uh, Hari fr uh, from Ballari, Mr. D.D. Gupta, and many others uh, from everywhere people are joining. Friends, uh, to start with, because uh, we, we would start at uh, 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, sure. And it is 10.52. The modus operandi is that we have a chit chat before uh, in the last eight minutes. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, for that, I would give you the information that uh, the last yesterday video link has been shared in the chat box. The yesterday webinar video link has been shared in the chat box. You can uh, take that video link and uh, see the webinar, complete webinar of yesterday uh, through that link. Secondly, the today's uh, PPT presentation of Shri Anil Mathur, it has also been uh, shared in the chat link, chat box. So you can always share it, always uh, make a copy from of it. And we will be uh, circulating the PPT presentation in all the groups after the presentation also. But it is already shared in the chat box. So you can always take it from the chat box. The same rules as earlier would continue. We will have an inaugural session wherein uh, the chairperson of today's meeting, Madam Premlata Bansal, would give her opening remarks. Then we will have a presentation of Mr. Anil Mathur for 35 40 minutes. We will have a uh, concluding remark by the chairperson again. And then we will be open for the query session. I will be muting everybody. I will be muting everybody except the speaker. And uh, we will continue to listen to the speech. Now, uh, I would request Vinay Kumar Jolly, the chairman, Central Zone, to speak a few words. Professional brothers and sisters, I welcome you all to the third webinar organized by AFTP Central Zone. I welcome London speaker, C. Anil Mathurji. You have Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Vinaji. Now I would request the Secretary General, not Secretary General, Secretary uh, Central Zone, <laughs> Secretary Central Zone, Mr. Sandeep Agarwal, to speak a few words. <coughs> Mr. Sandeep Agarwal. Join me here. No, he has joined. Ankaji. Yes, sir. I have a photo of the photo. I have a photo of the photo. I have a photo of the photo. I have a photo no, no, this is live. I live. I I Sir, Pram. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. हम लोगों की सांस वहां नहीं पहुंचेगी भाई चिंता मत संदीप अग्रवाल यू आर लाइव सर वो बहुत हो गए कुछ मेंबर्स गए घर में ताले लगे हैं सर कुछ मेंबर्स के गेट लॉक कर दिया गया है लॉकडाउन गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन द बिहाफ ऑफ एएफटीपी सेंट्रल जोन आई एम थैंकफुल टू ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर जॉइनिंग दीस मीटिंग्स रेगुलरली uh, now we uh, today we have unlimited uh, users, unlimited persons can join this meeting. No limit is there. Thank you again, Anil Mathur Sahib, today's uh, speaker, Prem uh, today's chairperson, and all dignities. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, 
थैंक यू संदीप जी एंड दिस इज द टाइम एक्चुअली दिस इज द टाइम दैट वी कैन ज्वाइन थ्रू दिस वेबिनार एंड दीज आर द टाइम्स वी कैन बेनिफिट फ्रॉम ईच अदर the subject of today the company law llp fresh start scheme llp settlement scheme uh, nuances of insolvency and banking code are the subjects which are in use for everybody and they would be required to be grasped and worked by everybody we will be hearing the speaker and the chairman shortly we will be starting the webinar officially in 3 minutes now so for 3 minutes i am uh, opening the session anybody can give uh, anybody can have a comments and before opening the session as mr ganesh purohit our past so, president is here i would request him to say a few words thank you pankaj ji it is a great effort of our society own i appreciate the effort made by the team and all that yeah yeah we are all taking it सबको म्यूट कर दिया अभी हेलो सर अब आप बोलिए वही मैं कह रहा था कि सबको म्यूट कर दिया आपने आई वेलकम ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स फॉर दिस थर्ड वेबिनार ऑफ द सेंट्रल जोन एंड आई अप्रिशिएट एंड द कमेंडेबल एफर्ट ऑफ द सेंट्रल जोन पर्टिकुलरली पंकज घिया जी एंड हिज टीम फॉर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग दिस वंडरफुल वेबिनार्स एंड फ्रेंड्स यू विल बी सरप्राइज टू नो दैट यस्टरडे देयर वर मोर देन 500 पार्टिसिपेंट्स एंड सिंस द लिमिट वाज 500 द अदर पीपल कुड नॉट जॉइन इन that is why today i think uh, as mr agarwal was just now telling that there is no limit today it's a very very good uh, uh, appreciable uh, move that you are permitting all the people to join in without limit that will that will go a long way in uh, helping to educate our fraternity and uh, i would say this is a boon in disguise of the covid 19 that sitting at our home we are having participants more than in any convention or in any seminar for that matter and without spending a single penny in the comfort of your home or your office you are joining the webinar educating yourself without spending any money and having a chance to meet all your old friends of course in a virtual meeting not physically but even then even when you say face, see the faces of each other you feel as if you are you are uh, actually meeting those friends i will not take more time because it is now 11 o'clock it is time for madam mansal to come on and uh, give her comments thank over you sir pankaj. over to pankaj thank you thank you thank you sir uh, friends this is the third uh, webinar in the series of webinar announced by aftp central zone uh, without wasting any time because we are directly on the point and we don't want uh, to Uh, uh, waste the time i would request the chairperson of today's meeting madam prem lata bansal senior advocate from delhi a uh, uh, wizard in the tax laws a lady who always helps any time i have a difficulty or anybody have a difficulty we always call her for her guidance for her advice uh, for uh, any uh, uh, matter and she is always there to help us guide us and she is a friend philosopher and guide to all of us uh, she is the past national president of all india federation of tax practitioner the first lady pre uh, president of the all india federation of tax practitioner i i welcome her and i ask her to say her opening remarks madam prem lata bansal ji thank you pankaj ji for giving such remarks which actually i do not preserve but before giving my opening remarks first of all i want to congratulate the organizer shri pankaj ji and shri vinay jolly ji chairman of central zone for organizing this zoom webinar hum sab ke liye ye zoomne ki hi baat hai ki corona ke andhkar se hum log gyan jyoti ki taraf ja rahe hain aur isliye main organizer ka 
तहे दिल से अभिनंदन करना चाहती हूँ नाउ टूडे सब्जेक्ट इज रिसेंट चेंजेस इन कंपनीज एक्ट एंड द इंसॉल्वेंसी एंड बैंक कोड दैट इज आई फ्रेंड्स कंपनीज एक्ट हैज सीन रिसेंट ओवरहॉलिंग brought by the company's amendment at 2019 which has received assent assent of the president on 31st july 2019 the amendment considers the changes brought by ordinance 2018 and 2019 ordinances to further amend the companies act 2013 while introducing the bill in the lok sabha honorable finance and corporate affairs minister shrimati nirmala sitaraman said the bill seeks to ensure more accountability and better enforcement to strengthen the corporate governance norms and compliance management in corporate sector as enshrined by companies act 2013 friends there are many changes key changes i must say that the basic change is that that the companies are restricted which are incorporated after the amendment after the commencement of the amendment having a share capital from commencing any business and exercising the borrowing powers unless and unless a declaration declaration is filed before roc what is this declaration declaration is that that the subscribers of memorandum have paid their value of the shares and many other things anil mathur will throw the light on this similarly other amendments are shifting of certain powers from nclt to central government then what are the matters to be stated in the prospectus the materialization of the securities it says that not only the public companies but also unlisted companies can issue the shares in dematerialized forms there are various changes in penal provisions then the further changes are the registration of charges after the commencement of amendment charges are to be registered with roc in how many days many norms are incorporated in this then corporate social responsibilities 2% of the profit of immediately preceding 3 years have to be spent by the corporate sectors towards social responsibility and if not spent then that is to be transferred to the separate account and many other things compounding of offences earlier no power is given i mean nobody can compound the offences but now power is given to the regional director or the officer authorized by the central government to compound the offences where penalty is up to 25 lakhs then companies amendment bill 2020 is also introduced which seeks to de to decriminalize certain provisions based on their gravity constant endeavor is made by the government to facilitate greater ease of living of law abiding corporates so many amendments every time law has been amended why parivartan is the second name of pragati because we are moving towards the globalization and therefore law law has to be amended otherwise our development will be stagnant so parivartan hi pragati ka naam hai aur uske development ke liye bahut zaruri hai parivartan similarly there are many many changes i mean insolvency and bankruptcy code that is one of the effective reform after gst that is brought with the potential of transparently and expeditiously resolving the india's overwhelming non performing assets 
IBC is a successor to the Presidency Towns Insolvency Act 1909 and Provincial Insolvency Act 1920. IBC 2016 provides legal framework for insolvency resolution of corporate persons, partnership firms, and individuals in a time-bound manner for maximization of value of assets of these persons and balance of interest of all the stakeholders. As of 2015, insolvency resolution in India took 4.3 years on an average against one year in UK and 1.5 year in USA. We are very slow in resolving the issues. IBC is implemented with a high expectation to resolve the corporate insolvency issues, but there are many glitches multiple challenges and issues. Inherent issues are slow judicial process. Time is, as time is of essence where huge amount is invested. Longer the amount is stuck up, longer from getting it circulated in the economy. Quick incorporation and quick dissolution of a company in a country portrays the ease of business. Amendment brought by the center in August 2019, extending the deadline from 270 days to 330 days and making it mandatorily for completion of issues seems to be a futile exercise because in most of the cases, the days are extended or the Supreme Court gives the extension. Secondly, lack of benches. Issues are so many, cases are so many, but scarcity of benches. Forum of entertaining and resolving the issues is a key to swift judicial pronouncement. Government in July had announced 25 additional single and division benches. But most of them are non-operational. Similarly, pecuniary jurisdiction of NCLT. The limit is only rupees one lakh. Now that nowadays one lakh has no value in our economy. Similarly, extension given by the adjudicating authority after completion of stipulated period that is 330 days and to delay in justice. Delay is also caused by procedural inefficiencies. There are legal hurdles. I must say that compensation scheme is to be evolved. If one of the party is won by NCLT, then if the another aggrieved party goes to the Supreme Court, then the compensation issue has to be evolved in the law. Apart from that, cross-border insolvency provisions are also to be incorporated because nowadays we are moving towards globalization. So there are so many issues. One of the most basic issue requires the efficiency in justice rendering system. The judgment has to be rendered in the commercial time and not in judicial time. There are so many issues, but my time is over and I am handing over the mic to Sri Anil Mathurji, who will throw light on in detail. Thank you, Pankaji. I move on to the speaker, Sri Anil Mathurji. Uh, to start his presentation and to uh, say start his presentation and the topics today. Shri Anil Mathur. Just a minute, there is some technical issues. Uh, we will be... Yeah, Anil Mathur, your mic is open now. 
Namaskar, good morning to all the seniors, FTB members and other professionals. Thank you very much, uh, Chairman Ma'am, uh, for throwing the initial light on the various amendments. Uh, of course, there are so many amendments uh, made in the Companies Act and IBC uh, during 2019 and all, uh, which needs a lot of discussions and most of them have been already covered by you. In fact, what I'm uh, trying to do today is and directed to me by the organizer was uh, the amendments or rather changes which have been brought during this COVID period. So I'm sticking presently to those uh, changes which have been made during the COVID period and then would take over if the time permits to me. Uh, welcome to you all for the, on this day two of lockdown two and uh, series three of webinar series one by AFTP. Because by the time I think this first series goes over, we will have a series three announcement by the AFTP also. My congratulations and thanks to the organizer, particularly Pankaj, ably backed up by Jolliji, Sandeepji, to organize such uh, seminars during this period. And uh, we are grateful to have the patronage of uh, past chairmen, uh, Ganesh Puraji is here today. P.C. Joshi Shah was there for last two sessions. Mr. Ashok Saraf was already there. So it's, it's all very encouraging that uh, the seniors are participating and guiding uh, uh, for, to the benefit of the members. Now, uh, coming uh, uh, to the subject, what I am trying to cover today is changes made during COVID periods in Companies Act and insolvency in bankruptcy courts. You know, this COVID period has thrown economy and caused great difficulties and everything for this economy. And to, for these two things, I'm first taking up the changes which have been made in the company laws. The finance minister on 24th of March, 2020, in our first initial address to the nation had announced certain measures which were to ease out the compliances. And later on, uh, an ordinance was issued on the 31st of March. This covered many uh, compliances uh, in income tax, GST, Companies Act, IBC and all. The first of that during this period was a press release issued on 31st of March, which has introduced two schemes. One is company fresh start schemes 2020 and an LLP settlement scheme, which was already in work and which was subsequently revised. And you know, uh, there are settlement schemes under indirect taxes, Sapka Saat, Sapka Vishwas. We have another scheme in income tax set. Therefore, it was imperative that the company's uh, law would also have a such settlement scheme for the benefit of the companies who have made default in filing of their various documents. So, Ministry of Corporate Affairs, in pursuant to Government of India efforts to provide relief to companies and LPs, has introduced two schemes that is, CFSS 2020 and the modified LLP schemes. The scheme, uh, LLP benefit scheme was already in work and which has been now revised. The basic USP of these two schemes is that it provides immunity to both companies and LLPs to take corrective measures for any filing related defaults, irrespective of the duration. The point is that now, even if you're, you have defaulted in filing of documents for any period, you can do the filing during the existence of this scheme, which is uh, 1st of April to 31st of September 2020. What government expects is that after removing such defaults, the companies and LPs can make a fresh start. So this is what is incentive is given and expectation is that, that you will reduce the compliance burden during this COVID period 2019. The attraction of uh, the CFSS and this uh, modified LLP scheme is that it provides a one-time waiver of additional fees for delayed filing by companies with ROC during this period of 1-4-2020 to 30th of September 2020. 
you can file the documents during this period irrespective of the period to which the delay pertains both these schemes also provide immunity from penal proceedings and late submissions of forms and for filing of appeals before regional directors in case you have forgotten the right and against imposition, imposition of penalty which has already been instituted um, during this period the point to be noted is that immunity is only against delayed filing in mc21 and not against any violation of the law for example what about somebody is required that you have to uh, a company if it uh, issues shares then it is required to file return of allotment the immunity is only to the non filing of the return of allotment but not any consequential default if that has gone in accepting that money or utilization of that fund or something like that supposing you have to file it uh, change in the um, uh, board of directors that delay in filing the documents can be condoned by this uh, scheme but if there are any procedural lapses for that those, the, those things are not covered here so the the first thing that i'm taking up now is that company fresh start scheme 2020 it has been notified by mca on 30th of march through a general circular number 12 2020 the basic aim as per this scheme is to facilitate companies incorporated in india to make a clean state it provides measures to elevate and benefit all the companies it grants one time opportunity to stakeholders to enable complete pending documents filing and make necessary filing of the sorry for the interruption it grants one time opportunity to stakeholders to enable them to complete pending compliances of filing necessary documents mca including annual filing without being subject to administrative fees you know there are so many uh, documents returns statements that are to file annually in case of companies as well as periodical filing of various statements and this scheme enables those companies who have been unable to file such documents either annual filing documents or periodical documents they can now file it without subject to additional fee on account of the delay in filing now what is required is that you have to pay only normal filing fee you are not required to pay additional fee this way this scheme is slightly different from the earlier schemes earlier this scheme was uh, this company act had company law settlement scheme 2010 cls where other than the normal filing fees 25% of the additional filing fees was also required this a scheme is a better in a way that it enables you to file all pending documents during the currency of this scheme without payment of any additional fees and also grants immunity from launching of any prosecution or penalty proceedings on account of delay relating to the filing only please make a note of that that this scheme is providing you immunity only for the delay relating to filing of documents but not on account of any consequential default in any of the provisions of the act this scheme also provides an opportunity to, to inactive companies means inactive companies as you know are those companies which activities for a longer period they can now after filing the documents they can declare themselves as a dormant companies under section 455 of the act and such companies can opt after filing the documents the simple application with payment of tariff fees and get the, uh, themselves declared as uh, dormant company now another thing that is to be noted is if a defaulting company or officer in default 
with respect to any statutory filing has filed an appeal against any notice or complaint or order is passed by court or adjudicating authority for violation of provisions of act in respect to which this application is made under the scheme the applicant shall before the filing of application for issue of immunity certificate withdraw this uh, withdraw the appeal and furnish such proof what is required is supposing uh, there, there already some uh, notices have been issued or complaint has been made and a uh, company or the officer said default have already filed an appeal against that order or notice then the benefit is given for withdrawal of such appeal and apply for the immunity so other beneficial measures apart i mean this this para is applicable for those companies who have already filed an appeal now what happens if there is a case when a penalty has been imposed by adjudicating authority and appeal was not preferred by the concerned company before regional director under, under section 454 sub clause 6 of the act as on the date of commencement of this scheme the commencement of this scheme is 1st of april 2020 now in such cases what is being provided is that the companies also get time to file a appeal against the penalty which has been imposed by adjudicating authority however these are contains two riders where last date of filing appeals falls between 1st of march 2020 to 31st of march may 2020 both is inclusive means the commencement of the scheme is on 1st of september so if you are supposed to file an appeal the filing of appeal which falls due between 1st of april 2020 to 31st of may 2020 then the companies get an additional period of 4 months that is 120 days from due date of filing of the appeal 120 days is because this is scheme would uh, get over on 30th of september 2020 so by the if the your last date for filing of appeal is 31st of may you get 222 additional days to allow you to file the appeal and during this additional period of grace of 120 days the prosecution under section 4548 will not be initiated against such companies in respect of the delay during the period so the earlier earlier para related to the appeals which have already been filed by the company or officers in default and they had to withdraw uh, such appeals there can be a case the mc has also covered that case that if penalty was already imposed but the company has failed to file an appeal before regional directors the penalty provisions as you know are contained in section 454 of the act and 454 sex is a filing of an appeal before regional director within 60 days from the date of order so what you get is an opportunity to file a appeal as well as non initiation of the prosecution to such state so once you have submitted completion the submission of the documents filing of all the pending documents then what you can apply for an issue of immunity certificate in respect of documents filed in the scheme after closure of the scheme and when the documents are taken on file or record or approved by the roc so once you have filed the documents you have to file this application for immunity for further procedure under form cfs 2020 no filing fees is required to be paid for this form this last date for making such application is 6 months from date of closure of the scheme that means after 6 months from the 30th of september you can apply for granting of immunity certificate there are however two provisos because this uh, cls had eight paras and para 6 is the most important and this para 6 of this scheme which covers this immunity this says that there are two provisos which do not allow you to obtain an immunity one is immunity is not available in the matter of any appeal pending before the court of law 
and in case of management disputes pending before any courts of law or tribunal means if it, if you have immunity is not available in matter of appeal pending which has not been withdrawn and in case of management disputes because they are out you can have operation in management you can have dispute regarding transfer of shares anything if those kind of disputes are there then immunity is definitely not available Another second proviso is that immunity is also not available in case any courts has order conviction. That means your prosecution as a order has already been passed, or penalty order has been passed by your adjudicating authority, but no appeal has been preferred against such orders before this scheme came into force. There, I mean, to me, there is certain overlapping in the second proviso. Because what earlier uh, subclass five of uh, six says that in case you have failed to file an appeal, then you have got 120 days for the extension of time to file the appeal if the filing period was between 1st of March to 31st of May. And in during those 120 days, the prosecution proceedings were not supposed to be initiated. This second proviso says the immunity is not available in case any court has ordered conviction, fair enough, because you, you have already been convicted. But no appeal has been preferred against such order before this scheme came into force. That means if on 1st of April you have not made any preferred any appeal, then you are out of the immunity. This seems to be slight over appeal. Uh, I just wanted to uh, bring it to this kind of note. Uh, Notice there is a difference between clause uh, 5 and clause 10. The designated officer for the issue of immunity certificate is a registrar of companies uh, to where the registered office is situated. And once the immunity has been granted, the designated authority will withdraw the prosecution before the court and proceedings for adjudication of penalties, except as stated in second proviso. So the, the, uh, this, I think, we have to wait either for the clarification or maybe some FAQs in this regard. Now, this uh, scheme is, as you know, applicable for filing of belated documents. But there are certain areas where this scheme is not applicable. This CFSS is, is not applicable. This is not applicable to companies to which final notice for a strike of name has been initiated by the designated authority. The word used have are the companies to which final notice for a strike of, of name has been initiated, not necessarily that the final notice has been issued. What, what is important, even if the registrar of companies is initiated for the procedure to issue a final show cause notice for a strike of name, then this scheme will not be applicable. This scheme is also not applicable to those companies who have already filed an application for a striking of the name. The striking of name, as we know, is uh, old section 560 and this current section is 283, 248 of the Companies Act. So in both these cases, you are not eligible for this scheme. This scheme is also not available to companies which have amalgamated under a scheme of arrangement or compromise under the Act or where application has been already filed for dormant status of the company. This scheme enables you to apply for a dormant status under Section 455 of the Act. Once you have completed uh, the filing of the delay documents and for the inactive companies, but if, if the company has already made an uh, application for moving to dormant status under Section 455, then uh, this scheme is definitely not applicable because the main aim of this scheme, one of the aim of this scheme was also to enable the inactive companies to come to the state of dormant companies so that the compilation uh, compliance level of and filing of forms is greatly reduced in case of the dormant companies. Rightly so, this is also not applicable to the vanishing companies. We know what vanishing companies are, although they have not been specifically defined in, anywhere in the Act, but the managing companies is not applicable and it is also not applicable to those companies who have 
increase in authorized capital and charge related documents increase in authorized capital is where you are supposed to file form sc7 and charge related documents where you are supposed to file charge related document document 1 4 8 and 9 if uh, if you have failed to file i mean this is applicable to filing of all the documents except the documents relating to the increase in authorized capital and charge the main reason i think it appears that the companies who have already taken necessary steps for increase in authorized capital should be compliant at the initial stage because there are so many things right from the taking of accepting of the money to keeping in the bank account the utilization and the refund etc also such steps are involved so the mc does not want that such companies have to be vigilant and they have to be regular in filing such documents and since they charge related documents uh, the banks and financial institutions are involved so the the delay in such documents is not allowed as already told that there are options for inactive companies that the such defaulting companies when defaulting companies which have been defined in uh, para 6 that companies who have not filed the documents in time the defaulting companies filing due documents in the scheme can simultaneously means the moment you you complete the filing requirements and simultaneously you can also apply to be declared as dormant companies by filing e form msc1 with normal fees as well as you can apply for a striking of the name of the company by filing form stk and paying due fee which is applicable for striking of name 5000 10000 whatever is there so option is available to the only to the inactive companies because what the company mc wants that once you have done the uh, the filing you have to come start with a clean state this is for the regular companies for inactive companies there are two options either you can apply for a status of a dormant companies such companies uh, uh, i think though they will prefer those who already hold the properties in the name of the companies and not carrying out any commercial activities those companies would prefer to go under the head dormant companies and if you are not carrying out any work any businesses then definitely it's always advisable that you straight away go to winding up of your work so you can file this type of application for striking of the name a word of caution has been also given uh, in the last pair of this scheme that the designated authority once the scheme is closed will take necessary action under the act against the companies who have not availed the scheme and are in default in filing these documents in timely manner so they do not want the companies to continue in operation without obtaining the benefit of this scheme once you have obtained the benefit got an immunity certificate you have got a clean slate go ahead but if you still do not opt for this cfs scheme company fresh start scheme then um, be prepared for the consequences so this this was uh, in nutshell uh, the settlement scheme what we call is or amnesty scheme which has been introduced by mca in the companies act in line with the schemes which was already in uh, indirect taxes and direct taxes indirect taxes scheme as you know has been already extended up to june 2020 and vishwas vivar scheme is already extended up to june 2020 the next uh, which uh, we are taking up is uh, settlement scheme for llps this the uh, by way of this press release of 30th march these two schemes were made in operation one was the company fresh start scheme and another was a modified llp scheme the there was already in existence this llp scheme 2020 which uh, for the sake of convenience is we call now old scheme it was already in circulation through general circular number 6 of 4th of march and it has also provided benefit to the llps who have failed to file their documents in time the main aim to bring this old scheme was that electronic registry mca was not 
having uh, complete records of the uh, documents of the LAPs and was unable to take necessary corrective actions against the defaulting companies. Aim was also to file, enable this uh, defaulting com LAPs to file various documents like Form 3, 4, 8, and 11 with minimum anticipate. Form 3 is uh, agreement of LAP, Form 4 is change in the uh, designated member or uh, change in the member of the LAP. Form 8 is annual statement of financial and insolvency declaration and Form 11 is annual return of the LLP. So the aim was to enable these company LLPs to file these forms with a minimum additional fee. So accordingly, this one-time condonation was there in terms of the scheme which was originally announced on the 4th of March. This scheme was supposed to close on 30th, 13th of June 2020. And since on, by 30th of March, there was a press note and this scheme was revised and now uh, treated as a modified LLP settlement scheme. There has been certain changes in the existing schemes. The existing scheme has not been really withdrawn, but has been amended. So this old scheme was eligible for the filing of documents which would to be filed by date of 31st of October 2019. And defaulting LPs were allowed to avail the scheme by payment of additional fee of rupees time. As you know, the, uh, the, for the delay, there is a penalty of 100 rupees per day. But for, uh, for these 3, 4, 8, and 11 documents, you were allowed to file with the payment of additional fee of rupees 10 only in addition to the normal fees. However, there was a cap of 5,000 rupees for overall care for the additional fees. Immunity from prosecution was also given uh, if you opt for this scheme by 13th of June. Now this, by virtue of this press note of the 30th of March, the MCA has issued another general circular number 13 on the same date and due to this COVID problems. And after introduction of this modified scheme, old scheme which was operative till 13th of June has been made operative only till 31st of March, 2020. Because on 30th of March, MC had come out with the press release and uh, this general circular. So the duration of the old scheme was cut short from 13th of June and made operative till 13th, uh, 31st of March 2020. What I have tried is uh, made a comparison of uh, old scheme with the new scheme and in a tabular form for the benefit of the participants. The effective period of the old scheme was, as you know, it was operative from 16th of March 2020 to 13th of June, as I mentioned in the parade of this scheme. Then this new scheme was operative from 1st of April 2020 to 30th of September 2020. Like CFSS, this has also have the same duration and by insertion of a new para 8A after para 8. There is some changes in the definition. The earlier scheme had only three definitions. Act means LLP Act. What was the meaning of LLP and defaulting LLP? One uh, more definition has been added, that is the definition of belated documents, thereby meaning that all documents or forms required to be filed under the Act and rules, they can be uh, uh, filed under this new modified schemes. The earlier scheme was eligible for documents which were due to be filed by 31st of October. Now the documents can be filed up to 31st of August. 2020 means documents which are due to be filed by 31st of August, they can be filed under this new scheme, which is valid up to 30th of September. There is a further relaxation given this new scheme that the normal fee and additional fee of rupees 10 day, which was applicable in the old scheme, has been changed. Now, the only the normal fees payable, you are not required to make payment of any additional fees like. CFSS. Here also in the LLP scheme, you are not liable to make payment of any additional fees. Immunity was given for documents which has been filed, of course, till 30th, but since now the scheme has been operative till 30th of September, 
and then as a form should be cleared. If you if you go through the old scheme, that non under the non applicability clause, it was mentioned that this scheme is not applicable to the filing of forms except form number three, four, eight, and eleven. And there was another second clause that LLPs who have applied for a strike of name. So th there were two categories. If you go through the LLP Act, there are around 21 forms which are required to be filed. And under this new scheme, non applicability clause is only one. That means for LLPs who have applied for a strike of the name as per Rule 37, one. Thereby meaning that all forms which were pending and due for to be filed or which were not filed or registered till day, such date can be filed under this modified scheme. And, uh, and now it is applicable only for those companies, uh, for those LLP, sorry, who have applied for a strike of their name under Rule 37. Rule 37, as you know, has two parts. That means those LLPs who are not carrying out any business for last two years, as well as the LLPs who have not done any business for one year and have made an application for striking of the name of the LLP from register. So these were the basic uh, changes made in the modified LLP schemes uh, with respect to the existing LLP schemes. Now the next one that I'm trying to take up is the corporate social responsibility. What are the changes affected during this COVID period? As you know, every, every uh, individual citizen of the country, the NGOs, the associations, our professional bodies, corporates, everyone is coming out, making their contribution for the uh, cause of uh, national calamity to the various funds, maybe prime minister relief funds, or carrying out so many activities. And this corporate social responsibility, as you know, is covered under Section 135 of the Companies Act. And the what what is as uh, chairperson has already stated that two percent of the profit have to be spent by eligible companies on this corporate social responsibilities. The scope of this corporate social responsibility has been defined in Schedule Seven of the Companies Act, which provides you the basic guidelines that the expenditure can be incurred by the companies in respect of the matters which have been broadly referred therein. And the CSR is only uh, is a guiding, uh, schedule is only for the guiding purposes and is to be liberate, uh, interpreted liberally. So I've just taken out certain FAQs which have been issued by the MCA through this General Circular 15 of 10th of April, providing clarification on allowability of uh, corporate social responsibility expenditures during COVID-19. The MCA has come out with six or seven questions and provided answers to that. And for the benefit of the participants, I'm just taking Clarifications which have been provided by the MCA for the such uh, expenditures. Whether the contribution made to the Prime Minister Cares Fund is eligible expenditure under corporate social responsibility? Yes, it has been clarified that it qualifies as a CSR expenditure under item number 8 of Schedule 7 of the Companies Act. There are 12 items under Schedule 7. Originally, there were 10. The, the 12th has been added in the May 2019 for as, as a disaster management expenditure. So under eight already existing, the, these contribution to the Prime Minister Care Fund is eligible expenditure for CSR. Then whether the contribution to CM Relief Fund or a State Relief Fund for COVID-19 are allowable expenditures? Unfortunately, no, because they are not covered in Schedule 7. What is covered in Schedule 7 is the uh, payment to the national funds, I mean, Prime Minister's or one, but not to the state funds. So, th therefore, these expenditures are not allowable expenditure. 
then whether the contributions made to state disaster management authority are covered yes they are covered under item 12 because disaster management uh, activities have been recently included under this uh, schedule 7 as item number 12 so they qualified as the csr expenditures spending of csr funds for covid 19 related activities yes they are already covered because the expenditures for the healthcare and sanitation and disaster management they are already been um, there is a general circular which qualifies that these expenditures are there so if you uh, companies are making any expenditure on csr funds for the promotion of healthcare sanitation and disaster management they they are also covered for that now see uh, this mcs come out with a faq on payment of salary or wages to regular employees including contract labor during lockdown payment as well as the payment of wages to casual or daily worker during lockdown period so whether these expenditures are covered under CSR expenditures, so the answer to this is no, because it is a contractual obligation or a statutory obligation of an employer to meet the salary expenditure of their employees, either during the lockdown period or because these are the moral obligation. Please, please just have a look at the uh, clarification provided by the MCA. MCA has stated, that payment during lockdown period is a moral obligation. However, the government is uh, saying that uh, all, all uh, to the all employers, the, not to cut down their salaries, but the CSR says that it is the moral duty so of uh, obligation. So therefore, such payments are not included in the CSR activities. However, the excretion payment, I mean, over and about whatever you're paying, has been given a one-time exception as an allowable expenditure of CSR. So if you are give, um, providing an excretion payment over and above the casual daily payment workers, that is an allowable expenditure as a one-time one exception. The two riders have been provided that the board of directors shall make an explicit declaration to the fact, which is certified by the state auditor. Now here lies a catch what, what the auditor is uh, supposed to uh, certify. Because the language is the board of directors shall make an explicit declaration to the fact which is duly certified by the state auditor. What auditor is supposed to certify the meeting uh, that the decision was taken or the expenditures? I think uh, answer should lie to the expenditure part only because whether the meeting was there or not, uh, state auditor is not morally obliged for that. So and these are certain uh, FAQs relating to the CSR during the COVID period. Just, uh, uh, I would like to come back for this contribution to the PM Cares Fed. You know, the CSR expenditure are not allowable expenditure in Section 37 of the Income Tax Act because any expenditure uh, on CSR incurred as per 135 of the Companies Act is not allowable expenditure. So what is allowed is the contribution to PM cares fairs out of CSR expenditure, but not. So the, the thing is that if the CSR expenditure are not allowable expenditure, but the contribution to PM cares fairs out of CSR expenditure is an allowable expenditure. So I think one time exception should also be given that uh, for allowability of expenditure under income tax, if your contribution is made out of CSR funds to PMK funds. This was just my thought on this. We know that during this lockdown period, the companies are not able to carry out their meetings or pass certain resolutions where personal presence of the members is desired. So, to mitigate such hardship, the ministry has come out with a general circular number 14 of 8th of April, specifying certain methodology to pass ordinary and special resolution during the COVID-19. You know, the Companies Act 1956, which was a com very comprehensive act, probably one of the most detailed act of uh, all the institutes, 
and this company is at 2013 is now more based on regulations and notifications and since it is a new act it also encourages the uh, the digital platform and um, um, this act contains many provisions where e voting and passing of the resolution is permissible through uh, other than the postal ballots also so section 108 provides for e voting and section 110 allows company to pass the resolution except ordinary resolution through postal ballots so you know what uh, ordinary business is what we do in the agm in the adoption of uh, accounts declaration of dividend these are ordinary business which which cannot be covered through vc or oavm means by video conferencing or other audiovisual modes uh, they have to be taken in the meeting only so in view of this present covid situation which requires maintenance of social distancing what mc has requested that the urgent decisions requiring approval of members other than item of ordinary businesses may be permitted by e voting or postal ballot without actual holding of a general meeting because in a general meeting since the personal presence is required and the member has got right to be heard so the uh, passing of uh, uh, holding of the meeting through video conferencing or oavm is not permitted but since you want to take certain decisions which required holding of an extraordinary general meeting the mc has permitted for uh, passing of the resolution through e, e voting these guidelines are for the holding of meeting on or before 30th of june 2020 and procedures are separate for companies which are required or who have opted for e voting means uh, such companies who are listed companies or who have got uh, shareholders of more than 1000 they they are required to hold e voting and of course their option is already there and other companies so procedure has been provided for the both such companies however there are uh, common uh, directions under the both heads and what i am taking is those directions which are common procedural directions which are common for both these companies so extra general meeting can be held through video conferencing or other audio visual modes and recorded transcriptions has to be kept in safe custody by the company and if there is a in case of a public company it has to be also made available on website if the company has got any website so transcription has to be kept convenience of time zone has to be kept in mind because the shareholders are out of country or some other other zones where there is a time zone difference so that has to be kept in mind it should have a like our webinar it should have a two way teleconference or webex for at least 1000 members on first come first serve basis but large shareholders mean shareholders holding more than 2% of the total capital key management persons or chairman of various committees they don't have to follow this first come first serve protocol facility for joining of meeting shall start 15 minutes before the time of meeting and shall continue 15 minutes after the closer of the meeting also remote e voting is also provided quorum would be uh, for the participation through video conferencing of course and the appointment of chairman if there are less than uh, 50 members in accordance with 104 means they have to choose it and otherwise through e voting there are the normal things proxy will not available because proxy is available for the case of general meetings only and proxy here is generally not available for such egms it is also suggested that at least one independent director if the company is obligated to have independent director should be present along with the statutory auditor of that meeting and if the statutory auditor means any auditor who is allowed to sign the balance sheet of the company should be present in the such such meeting and the resolution which has been passed in such meeting has to be filed with the registrar of companies within 60 days of completion of this meeting so these these were the guidelines provided by the mca in respect of the holding of the meetings in exceptional circumstances through participation by e voting also uh, 
In the end, I would just cover uh, some important changes which were announced uh, by the Honorable Finance Minister in her press release of uh, 24th of uh, March. And there's some extension has been provided and some relaxation uh, given for holding of the board of directors meeting. We know that the company has to hold uh, at least four meetings and there should not be a time gap of more than 120 days between such two meetings. The relaxation of 60 more days has been now provided for the next quarters. Means the meetings which are required to be held till 30th of September can be held with a relaxation of 60 days. The most important relaxation that has been given is the auditor's report under Caro 2020. This new Caro, which was to be effective from financial year beginning on the 1st of April 2019, has been now extended for the financial year beginning on 1st of April 2020. That means that this applicability has been extended by one year. So for the audit of uh, financial statement ending on 31st of March 2020, the uh, CARO under the old format would be applicable. For the independent directors, we know that uh, the companies have to have a meeting of independent directors. But if uh, during this COVID period, you cannot have a meeting of the independent directors, then such non-attendance by independent directors would not be considered as a default. So this is a relaxation given to the independent directors not attending a meeting. The companies uh, have to have a resident director in case of a director does not stay in India for more than 120 days, then such directors would be treated as a non-resident director. So if the director is unable to stay in 182 days in India, then this um, short stay in India for such period will not also be considered as a default. The newly incorporated company are required to file a commencement of business, which is within six months from the date of incorporation. A relaxation of six more months has been given to file uh, this uh, statement of commencement of business. The MC registry filing of documents uh, between April. Sir, to... uh, sorry to interrupt, but we have to wrap it up uh, in the scheduled time. I, I will just, Pankaj, I will just take five and two, three minutes for yes, just sir. to cover IBC. Sir, please, please go on. As but, fast as possible. Yes, sir, sure, sure. Because IBC, as everybody knows, is a uh, new act 2016, one of the better acts, uh, in, in my humble opinion, and which, which provides an opportunity for. Uh, resolution process and insolvency resolution process to be completed in a timely manner. And as we know that the litigation for corporate and LLP is through NCLT and that of individual and partnership by DRT. The, the laws for individual and partnerships have been uh, not uh, yet specified. And this uh, the, the code was not applicable to Jammu and Kashmir in respect of the individual and partnership forms. There is a change. And these, these are three important sections uh, uh, for uh, IBC, the financial creditors, anybody who was a, uh, to whom a financial credit is owed, and operational creditors means creditors on account of the supply or uh, goods and everything, and corporate debtor means the debtor. So these three sections are important sections, and why why the seven, nine, ten are important? Because uh, the FM has also, in her speech on 24th of March, has also covered these things. So. Uh, as ma'am ma ma was saying about this one lakh of limit, which is very small for the uh, in initiation of insolvency resolution, it has been now extended to uh, one crore of rupees. Uh, section four has been amendment because section four give a power to either increase the limit up to one crore. The, in, in one shot, the government has increased the limit to trigger insolvency proceedings against M MSME. So, I mean, this will be beneficial to MSME because the limit is now has gone to one crore. Another thing is, was an announcement by the FM that if the COVID situation continues beyond 30th of April, which in our country has continued, then the government may consider suspending the Section 7, 9, 10 means initiation of uh, this IBC proceedings for at least six months. So for I think for the next six months, the IBC would be a toothless legislation if the force major clause continues. Then another was uh, the press release by IBBI that uh, on 29th March that the, due to COVID period, if the insolvency resolution possible and everybody is not able to com uh, complete their time, so the, this time period would not be uh, would be relaxation. But however, the total time would be there. 
the the most important coverage is i think uh, applicability of this court on individual and uh, partnership on the state of jammu union territory of jammu and kashmir this uh, this amendment is not through mc or uh, ibc this amendment has come to ministry of home affairs who by the circular of 18th of march and published in gazette of india has by way of an order which is called jammu and kashmir reorganization adoption of central laws order by this um, gazette uh, announced uh, publication the central government has made applicability of practically all central laws to the union territory of jammu and kashmir and this this order was also on behalf of uh, because of this order means now you read over okay, that insolvency act the income tax partly arbitration everything has been now made effective to the jammu and kashmir after, after abrogation of article 370 so i am not taking up other uh, um, changes in the ibc like um, allowability of um, for real estate projects uh, 10% or 100% and uh, um, coverage of uh, uh, this thing um, and now uh, ibc does not uh, uh, allow this um, time uh, that thing um, that, uh, time time clauses uh, is also uh, have been also abolished so these these were in general the amendments which have come during the covid period and i'm thankful to the organizers okay. in providing me this opportunity and thank you very much please stop the screen share kar do uh thank you madhur sir it was a wonderful presentation and covering all aspects of uh, can you exit the screen please sure uh, uh it was a wonderful presentation and uh, we enjoyed all the recent amendments relating to the companies act the ibc the llp scheme and everything friends again i would request you to raise your hands not uh, not like this but raise your hands from tapping on your mobile there is an option of raising your hand there if you want to have any queries from mr mathur please raise your hands i have already one or two raising of hands which are coming and coming frequently uh before giving the mic for the comments to madam premlata bansal i would be uh, first asking mr mathur to answer few queries and then i would be giving the mic to madam premlata bansal for her chairman comment the i am unmuting uh, mr mahinder gargia mr mahinder gargia you are online please ask your query uh good mo good morning sir this is himang gargia this side hi ma'am uh, सर uh, ये जो अपन सी एस आर के अंदर डोनेशन कर रहे हैं तो ये मनी की जगह अगर हम मास्क एंड सैनिटाइजेशन डिस्ट्रीब्यूट कराते हैं जगह जगह पब्लिक प्लेसिस पे विल दैट काउंट एज सी एस आर में सी एस आर एक्टिविटीज फॉर दर्पज ऑफ हेल्थ केयर एंड एवरीथिंग इज अलाउबल सो दिस वुड बी डेफिनेटली कवर्ड अंडर सी एस आर एक्टिविटीज मिस्टर फसलुद्दीन Mr. Fazluddin, advocate. Sir, from Kerala, yes. Kollam. <laughs> yeah, Kollam. You are um, a regular. Uh, we 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 sir, we, sir. we saw you yesterday <laughs> and before also. Yesterday, yes. sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Sir, I got a little clarification from this uh, that uh, CSR for PM Care Fund is qualified. The uh, CM is not qualified. Then uh, the one more thing is the uh, government helps are. Situation like sir allowed, yes for that. I see in some some controversial on for this. Can you give, just explain the difference between this CMS fund is not allowed and COVID nineteen helps like uh, sanitation is allowed? Uh, Please sir. There is no specific mention uh, for the CM COVID fund uh, in Schedule Seven, and th that is why uh, the. the Contribution made to uh, CM funds are not allowable. Expended contribution to uh, state disaster management is allowable, but CM CM relief fund and state relief fund are not part of Schedule Seven, and therefore they are not allowable. Expended under CSR only the PM uh, funds are allowed. Mr. Shantanu Gupta. Sir, good morning. Shantanu Gupta Shantanu here. Shantanu ji, welcome from Jammu. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Huh. It's a yeah, pleasure to be here. अनिल जी माथुर साहब एक जस्ट आई हैव अ स्मॉल क्वेरी 
Sure. What we were discussing with regard to JNK reorganization bill. Mm -hmm. Now it has been, you know, implemented in letter and spirit in JNK. Will all these IBBI laws applicable in JNK now? IBB was initially also applicable to state of Jammu and Kashmir, excepting part three. Part three was in relation to insolvency proceeding against individuals and partnership firms. Okay. So now, that now it has also been made applicable to JNK. Mr. Bhajanath Ji Agarwal. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Uh, a very senior advocate, uh, Mr. Bhajanath Ji Agarwal. I am from Bargad, Odisha. Yeah, Mr. From Odisha. Yes, sir. Go on. Your query, please, sir. No, I have no query. Okay. Uh, Mr. Raghuveer Singh Pudia he is a blog writer, a very learned man from Jaipur. He is a regular blog writer in Hindi. And uh, his uh, articles are everywhere on the net, on the social media. So I welcome Mr. Raghuveer Singh Punya. He raised questions yesterday also, but unfortunately the time had expired. Uh, sir, you are on. Sir, Mary Kiri Mathur sahab said PM Care Fund ke baare mein hai ki PM Care Fund CSR ke liye to eligible ho jayega. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously kya PM Care Fund mera ATG ya 37-1 mein allowable hoga? Lekin PM, agar aap CSR ke through ja rahe hai, to CSR ke andar kya allowability hai ke CSR funds ko aap kis tarikhe se spend kar sakte hai? So schedule 7 and section 135 aapko ye kehta hai ki aap is CSR funds ka upyog kis tarikhe se kar sakte hai? Us mein aapko unho ne kai cheezhe bata rakhi hai. To aap CSR funds ka PM care fund ke andar upyog kar sakte hai. अब क्वेश्चन है अलाउबिलिटी का तो अलाउबिलिटी इनडायरेक्टली तो मिल सकती है इस तरीके से रघुवीर जी कि अगर आप सीएसआर फंड को कंप्यूटेशन में अगर लेके जाएं तो उसको ऐड बैक करेंगे और ऐड बैक करने के बाद में उसके अंदर से अगर आपने पीएम फंड में डोनेशन दिया है तो डायरेक्ट डोनेशन तो अलाउबल है एटीजी के अंदर बट इनडायरेक्टली अगर आप करें तो इस तरीके से होता है बट डायरेक्ट नेक्सस नहीं जो मैंने ऑलरेडी बोला है कि आप पीएम केयर फंड में डायरेक्ट तो अलाउड है बट थ्रू पीएम थ्रू सीएसआर फंड्स नहीं मिस्टर राकेश गुप्ता सर मेरा है कि जैसे अनक कंपनीज एक्ट में जो भी अनक ये नई स्कीम में आया कि अनक इंक्रीज इन कैपिटल एंड चार्ज डॉक्यूमेंट्स आर नॉट अलाउेबल है ना फॉर दिस स्कीम तो ऐसा क्या रीजन रहा होगा सर जिसके कारण से गवर्नमेंट ने ये नहीं किया चार्ज के डॉक्यूमेंट्स और इंक्रीज इन कैपिटल वाले चार्ज के डॉक्यूमेंट देखिए इसमें दो पार्टीज इन्वॉल्व है फाइनेंशियल इंस्टीट्यूशन में इन्वॉल्व है बैंक इन्वॉल्व है अगर आप उनको ये लगता है कि सब क्योंकि हमारे चार्ज का रजिस्ट्रेशन है उसमें नेसेसरी कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस होती है कि कंपनी के ऊपर उनके असेट्स उनके अंडर चार्ज आ जाएगी तो उसमें उन्होंने डेले परमिट नहीं करी है इंक्रीज इन ऑथोराइज कैपिटल में इसलिए नहीं करी क्योंकि ऑथोराइज कैपिटल का इंक्रीज का एक प्रोसेस है आपको किसको आपको अप्लाई करना है किससे आप पैसा ले सकते हैं उस फंड को आपको किस बैंक अकाउंट में डालना है उस फंड को कितने दिन में आपको यूटिलाइज करना है अनयूटिलाइज फंड को भी आपको किस तरीके से स्पेंड करना है तो वो वो कितनी इसमें सारी की सारी चीजें तो उसका मिस नहीं हुआ है इसलिए उन्होंने इन दो चीजों के लिए मेरे हिसाब से दिस इज राजन ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ इशिता Yes. I would like to ask कि जो एक लाख की लिमिट जो इंक्रीज हुई है एक करोड़ की CIRP प्रोसेस के लिए बता इट इज एप्लीकेबल और नॉट? It has it has been made applicable. Gazette notification is already there on twenty fourth of March. Uh, and is there, is there excuse me sir sir is there any change in uh, individual limit from one thousand? No, not not yet. Because अभी अभी एप्लीकेबल नहीं है ना सब पार्ट थर्ड. Okay 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 sir. Kritika Jain, Miss Kritika Jain. Yes, sir. So uh, one of my clients has distributed food packages uh, to the uh, under the state government scheme. So are they applicable, sir? It is a private limited company, sir. No, if the promotion is for healthcare, sanitation, disaster management, so uh, those those are allowable expenditure. And what what the government's intention is always there that for CSR expenditure you have to be liberal in mind. So if you can say that the food expenditure are for the healthcare. If you can cover it for that, then it is a possibility. Otherwise, no. Thank you, uh, friends. Uh, before uh, uh, going for other queries, I may remind you that tomorrow there is an important session again, same time, eleven o'clock, with the same ID. The ID will not change. The session time will not change, and it will continue till thirty-first, till first of May, two thousand twenty. So the tomorrow session is important aspect in notices issued under section one thirty-one. 
143 153 154 and 153 c of the income tax act and the speaker would be mr siddhartha from jaipur he is a chartered accountant converted advocate a very prolific speaker young speaker and i would request all of you to join at this uh, before going for other query the raising of hands are continuing and i would request first now uh, madam premalata bansal the chair person of the session uh, today to uh, give her concluding remarks for the today's session this is premalata bansal sir ma'am pankaj thank you first of all i must compliment mr anil mathur who has discussed all the provisions amendments in greater detail so but one thing i must say one query was raised I don't remember the name, but the query was whether the contribution is taken as a part of CSR, then whether deduction under Section 80G is available or not. In my opinion, once it is treated as part of CSR, then 80G will not be allowable. Because CSR is a part of, I mean, CSR is how to expenditure is to be made by the companies. Once it is treated as expenditure, then ATG donation, it cannot be treated as donation and ATG is not available because in ATG two particular items are there, then it will lose its character as a PM cares contribution. It is CSR and CSR is not part of ATG two. So to my mind, that will not be available as deduction under section ATG. In so far as that, other provisions are concerned in greater detail. Mathur sir has discussed. Mathur sir, I am once again reminding you that we have met at Indore. And I think at that point of time, you were also the speaker you were in my this chief. very yes. session. Yes, ma'am. Uh, a very yes, lucky you, coincidence. A very lucky yes. coincidence, ma'am. <laughs> you, you will continue to be. I just wish you to, to be my Again, chair. in future, we will meet. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I have a query from Mr. Satanarayan Singh, advocate. Mr. Satanarayan Singh. Yes, sir. There? Yes, sir. Go yes. On. Sir, as you have said that uh, as per the guideline issued by the government, uh, whether the ex gratia payment to the contractual employee will be considered as CSR? It has been allowed if, if the payment is extra over and over. Because, the because the contractual employees are not working, but uh, we, we are giving the payment to the contractual employer on the humanitarian ground. Whether it will qualify? The allowability has been given, provided as a one-time exception if the extra payment is over and above the contractual or regular payment. Just a one-time exception. Okay. It has been Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, any queries more? If somebody wants to have a query, please uh, raise your hand through your mobile or laptop. Or even raise your hand on the screen if I can see them. Uh, seeing no, none other, I may conclude. I would uh, ask Mr. Mathur to say a formal thank you. And then I would uh, uh, conclude the session. No, no, thanks. Thanks are uh, basically due to the organizers who have really um, Encourage us to utilize our time during this period and sharing our thoughts and interacting with the members for the changes which have been made during this COVID period and to keep in touch and allow us to meet at least uh, through a virtual position each other. Thank you very much for that. Friends, once again to remind you, tomorrow is a very good session on income tax. Please join the session, same time, same ID, uh, and we continue to join till. I would also request that we are uh, sending the uh, WhatsApp messages and all. Please share in all your professional groups so that more and more people can join and take benefit and uh, get the benefit of the expert speakers uh, from uh, all over the country. I would request everybody that it is their own program. It is not a program of a particular association or a particular individual. It is your own program. We are enriching our knowledge. We are enriching our knowledge in the presence of our seniors. So please join and encourage others to join. Circulate the message to all. Thank you, everybody, and see you tomorrow morning again. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <clears throat>